Yeah, I mean, just a few days before this this incident with Trump and the FBI, the FBI raided the African People's Socialist Party, yep. which is an example of a blatant attack on the left. I mean, so the FBI is in no way a friend of the left, but there, I think there's two different issues we have to kind of divide because they're well, kind of well, separate ben, political issues. Since you since you mentioned them, I have a video of Omari Yeshitela. Um, if you don't mind, if I cut in on you, I'm gonna I'm gonna play what he said on Democracy Now when he was asked about the raid. Because if anybody's confused about where we stand, I think I'm mostly I'm like 99.9 percent in agreement with everything that Omari Yeshitela had to say. Um, and and I, I think it's worth just playing this so people don't get confused as we critique colleagues on the left and and what they've expressed during the past week. So I'm going to put this up here. Um, this this is really a good statement from him. Going off and in those people climbing the walls of the Capitol. And the fact is that uh, the FBI is being used as political instruments. And certainly that's happened with us. And I can't speak to uh, the, the former president of the United States except to say that there's an obvious contest that's happening, happening between different sectors of the colonial ruling class in this country. And they would, if they could, lump us into their beef, their struggle. But uh, we are fighting for the liberation of black people, the unification, liberation of Africa, well, and we ain't going to stop. Amali Ashtala, we want to thank you. Fairly simple. Yeah. And, and that's another point I was going to make, which, I mean, the people like calling for the left, which I'll talk about in a second, because I, I even this whole idea of like the left needs to be interrogated, but like calling for the left to like ally with Trumpists is extremely stupid on so many levels. But also, if your enemies are fighting, let your enemies fight. Don't interrupt the fight between your enemies. How many like how many historical times do we can we learn that lesson? But even aside from that, I think there's two different issues we have to divide here. One is the issue of the case against Trump. And as all of us, you know, as we don't need to, I don't, I don't think we need to display to the audience, we're all extremely against the FBI, the U.S. police state. You know, we spent so much time opposing it. There are legitimate concerns about what Trump has been doing. Trump has seen himself as above the law for many decades, but especially since he became president. This guy, he, he's, you know, uh, l'état c'est moi, I'm the state. That's how he governed. Mm -hmm. And he does see himself as, as above the law. Hillary Clinton, similarly. And, you know, if, there, if it was justified to investigate Hillary Clinton for her very clear illegal mishandling of classified documents, then I think Trump doubly so. OK, so that's a separate issue. Then there's the issue of the political question. If the so-called left, which I'll talk about what that means in a second, should ally with literal fascists because they claim right now, this week, this minute, they claim to be against the FBI. Obviously, we know that's not genuine. That's ridiculous. We have to talk about what the left is meant by this. So first of all, when we say the left, there's, there's a laziness when people say the left that I really dislike. When people say the left, they often, and then you say, what do you mean? And they, they talk about like YouTubers. Yeah. Like, no, that's not that's not the left. The, like, what's the left? It's like Jimmy Dore. It's like, no, where is Jimmy Dore's like political party? Yeah. Like where? No, I mean, the left, it, it consists of organization. I mean, if you believe in actual left wing politics, you have to believe that collective action needs to be take, taken through organizational power. So we're talking about organizations, DSA, PSL, Workers World, Frizzo, uh, you know, other progressive organizations like that's the left. It's not a bunch of like weirdos with a YouTube channel like these so-called patriotic it's socialists. It's not us either, yeah. by the way. Like we're leftists. We are not the left. <laughs> yeah, like this guy. And then and then this gets us to this whole nonsense of like these patriotic socialists who have a lot in common with the national socialists, I'll say, and, 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 and how little socialist they are and how how much patriotic and nationalist they are. But uh, I mean, these people are, first of all, complete fringe. They have no influence outside of like social media. And I say this as someone who is a journalist, but like I don't claim to be a political leader. I don't claim to like, you know, have a, a movement of people behind me. Like these so-called patriotic socialists who always bend over backward to do lesser evilism in defense of Republicans. Wh mm -hmm. What is the point of that? Like all they're doing is be, they're inverting the old political problem of the social Democrats 
who claim to be socialists but always bend over backward to defend the Democrats as the lesser evil. They're doing the same thing but saying Republicans are the lesser evil. Mm -hmm. And they're calling for allying with people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who <laughs> is one of the most explicitly fascist politicians in the U.S. right now. Let's not forget, this is someone who, who honored and admires J. Edgar Hoover, the founder of the FBI, a complete McCarthyite and racist, who oversaw COINTELPRO, assassination of black revolutionaries like Fred Hampton, oversaw, you know, the surveillance and spying on of, of MLK. I mean, she, she was praising the FBI when it was cracking down under Trump on Black Lives Matter protests. Right. She called Black Lives Matter the biggest threat to the United States. Mm -hmm. This was a little over a year ago. She and all these Trump Republicans were encouraging the police to brutalize protesters. And now they're calling for, they're not gonna actually abolish the FBI. What is their tangible action plan for abolishing the FBI? First of all, they don't even have the votes if they wanted to, which they clearly don't want to. What's much more likely is they take power, the Republicans take power again, and they strengthen the FBI. I mean, th this is a ridiculous- She talk actually about said that, she actually has said that, by the way, that it's just that Republicans need to take back power. Yeah. yeah, that they can like make it not a political weapon anymore. Yeah. So, well, so this is a, this is a complex political debate that goes back many decades, right? It goes back hundreds of years about when you should form political short term alliances with your enemies, with, you know, far right, right wing libertarian people. Right. So here's an, another example. of This would be like the anti-war movement. Like, I think libertarians on economic issues are really dumb. I think their economic <laughs> worldview is insane. It's like they live on another planet. But there are a lot of uh, short term coalitions between the left and libertarians against war, against yep. the war in Yemen, the war in Libya. That makes sense because one, Syria, actually, yeah. I mean, I don't want to cut you off too much. But when I was at fire, when I still had Jane Hampshire at Fire Dog Lake, we actually whipped the House and stopped them from passing a resolution in support of the Syrian conflict that would have given Obama what he wanted to escalate. I mean, there was U.S. involvement, but he wanted far more. Yeah, well, that's an example of a clear, concrete political action based on votes. And yep. the left doesn't have a party in Congress. It Look, has if, no. Uh, it has a progressive Taylor, caucus. But. If Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to put forth a bill in Congress to abolish <laughs> the FBI, I will 100% support that specific policy goal and will do whatever I can to help get it passed. Yep. Yeah, but again, this, so... But getting back to the, the issue of like libertarians and like the left. So in that context, it makes sense because one, libertarians, despite my many disagreements with them and other issues, they have shown a consistency over many decades of opposition to war. Okay, this, this isn't something that has started a week ago and is going to end in eight days. The, right. the, the fake right wing opposition to the FBI. It is, it, they've showed consistency over a long period of time, which means that if you form a short term alliance with them, you're not going to get burnt because you know they've shown consistency on that issue. Furthermore, this is an, there's another major issue of this, which is that Marjorie Taylor Greene has made it very clear that her main enemy is the left. She campaigned on a slogan saying end socialism. She did campaign videos shooting the word socialism right. with a machine gun. So. You, if you form a, you, the other part of this is that if you form a, a temporary political coalition with someone, you do it with someone who is a lesser enemy, not a bigger enemy, right? Like libertarians, I think they're dumb on a lot of issues, but I don't think they're as bad as fascists. Yeah. Fascists are the number one enemy. And, and obviously I don't like liberals either, but if I have to choose between liberals and fascists, I'll choose the liberals. You don't ally with the people who are even worse enemies. That's not how political coalitions work. So the idea of the left allying with the far right against the center is extremely stupid. And by the way, the left has very little power. The far right in the U.S. has a lot of power. So if you form a coalition with someone and then your coalition wins, they They're will turn against you yeah. and you have no power. So the far right's going to win. It's like